Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining Rachel and I. We are super excited for this opportunity. Today's topic is three simple steps to generating awareness in a slowdown, and we could not be more excited. Uh, please put any questions you have in the chat section. But first off, who are we? Um, Rachel, you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I'm Rachel Berlin. Um, I just joined the Broadloom team a short while ago. Um, I'm one of the senior sales and training account managers for the FSU program. I live in Kohler, Wisconsin, and I'm a former, former sales and um, manager of Precision Floors and Decor in Wisconsin. Um, we did have a little question and answer as far as what our favorite types of flooring are. So Blake and I we divided and conquered. I said mine are custom wool area rugs. Um, and a fun fact about me is I am one of the facilitators for the women of the flooring business group. And we just celebrated our fourth year um, in facilitating that group. And we're just happy to um, celebrate all the women in this industry. And what about you, Blake? Love it. Yes, we're super excited that Rachel is now a part of the Broadloom team. Uh, I am Blake Powell. I am also a senior sales and training account manager currently residing in Mishawaka, Indiana. Before this, I was a retail sales leader and director of marketing and training for a company called ICC Floors in Indianapolis, Indiana. They did about 60 million in sales uh, last year and ranked uh, 27th in the floor covering weekly top 50 retailers in America list. Favorite type of flooring would have to be that good old finished hardwood. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. No other way to go. And a fun fact about me is I was a 2019 Floor Focus Emerging Leaders Award recipient. As we mentioned today, we're going to be talking about generating awareness in a slowdown with little to no spend. Some say we're in a recession. Some say we're heading to a recession. My favorite is the dealers that say they're not participating in the recession. Regardless, we're hearing and seeing changes in the landscape uh, and things seem to be slowing down. This indeed requires a mindset shift. You have to switch from a gatherer or peacetime CEO to a hunter and wartime CEO. We're not only here to discuss this, but uh, also give you actionable strategies and insights to navigate these challenging times and come out stronger on the other side. Uh, whether you're a business owner, a store manager, retail sales associate, uh, seeking to thrive in the shifting economic climate, it's crucial to adapt and adopt the mindset of a wartime CEO. All right, so we all know that reviews are super important for all of us in our businesses. Um, but one thing that we want to remind everybody of is that the reviews are not just important in the beginning stages. Um, they're all they're important all the way to the end. So we might think of the, getting that review at the end of the process, um, but we really want to look at that bigger picture. So all the way from the time when the client is just searching for your showroom to the time she walks in the door and then all the way through the process, we want to keep that review in mind so we can you know, really have a, a great experience for the client all the way through the process. Yeah, 100%. I think you nailed that. We want to make sure that that review is starting with that initial greeting and not just like post a mind, like let's let's get it after sale. Um, and also, you know, communication is super important as well. Um, it, it's really crucial in this industry. Getting the sale is not the hard part, in my opinion. You must deliver and constantly validate in the consumer's mind their decision to go with you. Uh, and this requires setting proper expectations, giving them frequent updates on the status of their material at delivery, and make sure that you do not schedule a job until that material is in your possession. Um, a customer should never have to reach out to you to get updates on their product or project. Yeah, I think we all have heard the statement, no news is good news. Uh, we'd like to say that that doesn't actually exist um, because we want to be the first ones that are really communicating with our customers to tell them exactly what the next steps are. 100%. And Rachel, how, how did you guys go about uh, asking for a review? Yeah, it really kind of came down to coming up with something that worked for the entire team. Um, we decided that we kind of, we wanted to, hit them when they were happy. So of course, like right after the, the project was finished up, they're like, I'm excited. 
you know, they're paying for their invoice at the end of the project. And you're like, Hey, you know, this would be, we would be so thrilled if you left us a review. Um, would you mind if I sent you a quick link to your, um, to your cell phone via, um, text message? They were totally fine with that. Or maybe even an email if they weren't a, you know, cell phone user. And that way they got the, the text message right away. We hit them when they're really happy and they were happy to leave that five-star review. I know you said you mentioned something about um, some of the incentive programs that you had in your experience. Yeah, something that worked really well for us is um, if a RSA or retail sales associate got a consumer to leave a review and mention them, and of course the review had to be five stars, then that RSA uh, got a $50 gift card. So it was a massive incentive. And I used to have RSAs beating down my door to say, hey, where are my you know, three, three $50 gift cards uh, for these reviews? So it was, it was a great way to get them to stay on top of asking for those reviews and actually getting them. Um, and obviously, you know, I think it's priceless for, for a good review. So the $50 really wasn't much when, when you take that into consideration. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I think it just comes down to having your team buy in to whatever process you um, decide on. Maybe they decide that they are all going to get five review, five reviews to, for this month. That is something that you guys decide on. Um, and that way they're bought in, you're bought in, you get the reviews. Um, but the important things is to start. So I think if you know how many re reviews you have currently today, Let's make a goal for the next month. And that way, you know that this coming month, you're going to put a target on the board and everybody works together to get those reviews. No, I love that. Um, and I think obviously thanking customers for their business is super important, but you want to thank them kind of what we talked about at the beginning of this throughout the entire journey with them. Thank them for coming in. Um, after you meet with them in the showroom, you know, send them a text or an email again, whichever they prefer. You want to ask that. But thank them again for their time. Let them know that you're excited to work with them. Also, reiterate your promises to them. If you said, you know, you'd come out and measure tomorrow, make sure you do that. If you say you're going to get them a quote within 48 hours, make sure you're going to do that as well. And then obviously, at the end of the sale, when you're done, just let them know how much you appreciate their business, how much um, it means to you, the fact that they're shopping local. And you could obviously do this from a, from a, a bunch of different communication methods, you know, call, text, email, handwritten note. Uh, obviously, some are more personal than the uh, others, but obviously, you know, do just do one of them. Um, if you've got the time, obviously, making it more personable is more meaningful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I love to do, and this was at the beginning of the process. So the first time the customer walked in the door, I said, you know what, this is a great opportunity to, to follow up with them. You might have handed them your business card at that time. Um, but we did what we called a, a taillight follow-up. And basically it was as soon as they walked out the door and they got in their car, I sent a quick text message and just said, hey, thank you so much for coming in. Um, we hope you had a great experience. We hope the love you love the samples that you took home. Here's my contact information. Should you have any questions and your measurement is set, up, um, is set for this day and time, that way they have your contact information in their hand. They don't have to search for your business card again, and they're not waiting for that next touch point. So you just set yourself apart from your competition. Um, Blake, you had mentioned that you had some other ways that you put together a thank you package for some of your clients. What was that like? Yeah, so we partnered with a local company called uh, Shop Indiana or Only Indiana. And they did the legwork in terms of meeting with other local entrepreneurs um, and kind of ta tailoring these really awesome packages, whether that be homemade cookies, homemade jams, cheeses, you name it. But they had different tiers. So every month we would run a report uh, of the largest projects we did on the retail side, and we would actually hand pick which dealers or which um, consumers would get what package. And so it was just a massive success. Uh, our consumers really, really appreciated the thoughtfulness of it. We were able to put, you know, an ICC banner in there, uh, a custom card with, you know, thanking them, a, a link to reviews via QR code. It was just, it was a great um, experience. And a lot of times 
just because of that, people would, you know, want to take to a, uh, a review site such as Facebook or Google and just feel kind of obligated to, to leave a review on their experience. And I know, Rachel, you, you did something cool too, right? Uh, at your company. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we did is we actually, we think that personalization is really important and I don't know, a lot of us will maybe put together like a coffee mug and a pen and some things that have your logo on them. I think that's okay to do, but maybe the focus should be more on the client. So we actually did a personalized cutting board and I actually have one because I wanted to show you what that looks like. So we actually did a custom cutting board like this and it has their name, um, you know, name and the year that we did the project. And that was just something that kind of gave them another, you know, it gave them something that will remind them of you when they use it or when they have it maybe sitting in a stand on their countertop. So just something that is personalized to that client. It gave them something um, to set in their home and it's, you know, it's just another little reminder. And we actually got thank you cards back for that. So it was the, it was reciprocal on all levels. So we love that. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I think it just, it goes so far and let's face it, that's not something that someone's just going to throw away. They're going to cherish that. They're going to use it psychologically in the back of their mind. They're going to think that, oh, precision flooring gave us this. Mm -hmm. They have friends come over and they're chopping up a charcuterie board or whatever. Um, they're going to ask about that board. Oh, I love that board. Where'd you get it? Etsy? Mm -hmm. No, actually, you know, our, our flooring company got that for us. Oh my gosh, how thoughtful. And that's going to lead to referrals. And I think that's just, I think that's great. Like we mentioned at the beginning, Long are the days of being uh, gatherers or order takers. You, you have to fight to earn your customers' trust in business. Uh, additionally, lead follow-up and nurturing, nurturing is essential. Uh, you should absolutely have some type of CRM system in place that allows you to see all of your company's leads and then be able to break that down by user or RSA. Um, you should view it regularly and make sure all notifications and tasks are followed up upon. It got to be really easy during COVID not to do the little things right because things were bonkers. Uh, there's a saying out there that if you had a flooring store and you weren't successful, there was a big problem. Uh, now we're kind of leveling to the way things were before COVID. And so it's important that, especially if in this slowdown, that you embrace doing things the right way and especially, you know, going about lead follow-up systems and processes is super, super important. Yeah. One of the things that I think is really important, um, I like to look at all the different lists that you might have of clients or different types of clients. So of course you have your past clients, the ones that have already bought from you. That is like your bucket of gold. That is where it is so much easier. I'm sure there's a statistic out there that says, these are so much more easy to sell a second time. Yet a lot of times we neglect them and a lot of times we don't even engage with them. Um, they just sit in that list and they just, nobody ever talks to them again. Um, hopefully in this time, if it is a little bit slower, this would be a perfect time to pull up that list of your past clients. Maybe it's time to start doing a newsletter. Maybe it's time to do a monthly, you know, just a touch point um, via newsletter, via text message. But you also have those clients, like you said, that maybe haven't purchased yet. Um, or maybe you met them at a home show. That Those lists are also very, very important to reach out to again. Um, we're in the digital age right now. And of course, we're a technology company. But mailers are very important. That is another way that you can you know, really reach out to those clients that have not purchased yet. So, you know, finding a way to re-engage and to put a, put a process in place so you're using those lists and you're really utilizing all the things that you have in front of you. And like you said, those CRMs, um, that's where everything lives. So use that to your advantage and really just figure out a good way to reach out and do that on a regular basis. Yeah, I absolutely love the idea of a newsletter. And I think you could extend that to a you know, private sale, or if you do a big um, showroom remodel, a, a grand reopening, just ways to get, you know, past customers in to see what's changed, update them on trends, things like that. I, I think that's uh, crucial and a great way to do it. Now, in terms of how many times do you call, text, or email to win a job, this is super important. Uh, I have learned through experience in my role here that a lot of dealers uh, and their uh, sales associates, you know, it might be 
a couple times uh, right when they get that lead. And then they kind of view it as, oh, they must not be interested and kind of forget about it and don't don't do anything else. There's studies out there that you have to reach out to somebody at least eight to 10 times just to get a contact. So if you're only reaching out one, two, three times, you're already losing. So I, I highly recommend up the follow-up, especially in that first week. There's studies also that show that from the time of research to time of buying, making a purchase decision, that's seven to 10 days. So again, if you're only following up and reaching out you know, three, four times in two weeks, you've already lost. So up your follow-up game, especially early on, obviously leveraging the um, a CRM system. And then, um, Rachel, how did you go about um, seeing if people were still interested? Yeah, I I think like one, one thing that ends up happening is you just think that somebody is completely ghosting you. Yeah. You know, you're like, okay, I tried three times. I got nothing back. Um, and, and you really kind of get discouraged from it, but I find that the, I don't know, I like to call it like the seven word email or the seven word follow-up is really important. Um, and that is, are you still interested in your blank project, your tile project, your carpet project that typically will get you at least an answer. So let's just say it's no, I went somewhere else. Okay. Then you know that. Hopefully that's not the answer, but otherwise, if they say, you know what, thank you so much for reaching out. We're going to do this in six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is something great to realize. And then you put them in your CRM, you set yourself a reminder in five months from now to follow back up. And that way you at least know kind of where they're at with their project. I was wondering, Blake, did you ever have anybody get mad at you for following up? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe the old timer that was like, please take me off your list. I want somebody else, somewhere else. But uh, and then you know, you know. <laughs> never had anybody tell me to screw off or <laughs> just be super unhappy. I think they view it as if you're over the top on the front end, then you're going to be over top of things during the installation side, especially if something does go wrong. You know, we call oh, them totally. exploratory surgery because we didn't know what we were getting into. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the more communicative and again, over the top you are on the front end, it's just going to make things that much better when a consumer decides to go do business with you. Yeah. It's like they're, you're kind of setting the stage for how the communication will be throughout the whole project. I mean, and let's just be honest, not a lot of people have done a big remodel project or even a big flooring project in their experience. So if you're going to make it easy for them and you're going to really communicate throughout that whole process, um, that I think that really just sets the stage for a great experience all the way through the end. Um, some other things that I noticed were, you know, sometimes you're like, I need to have a reason to follow up, but I don't want to just say I'm following up in an email because sometimes that just sounds goofy. And you're like, what can I do? Well, I know we've used some methods of maybe you found a, a floor that you know they were looking for and it came in in between the time that you last talked to them. You could send them a link to your online visualizer. You could say, hey, I have the best, pro I have the greatest floor that I think you would love. Here's a link to it. It goes to your website. They can take a peek at it. You're kind of re-engaging them. Um, Blake, tell us a little bit more about some of the the tools that we have here at Broadbloom that we've found success with as well. Yeah, let's face it, you know, customer expectations have changed um, and we want to keep elevating the customer experience because of this, especially when it comes to the experience they're getting with companies like Amazon and Google. Um, and so because of that, you know, we have through some of our programs and our partnerships, online sample ordering functionality, online visualizers, in-store kiosk. We're trying to, at any given touch point or any part of the consumer journey, elevate that experience. And not only that, but give allow consumers to do their research and get everything they're looking for when they want it, whether that be ordering samples at 2 a.m., uploading a photo on the visualizer, or coming into your showroom. Uh, so we are kind of cutting edge. You know, we just won best in technology two years in a, a row. 
of giving consumers high tech tools to help uh, with any given project in, in the flooring world. All right, so on to our next point, we all know that in the last couple of years, we've had just a little different of a time in our businesses where we were almost too busy to do the extra things. Um, one of the things that we know has been really important in our industry and in our business is networking. Uh, one of the things, you know, we, we really do, we dealt with the busy time and now we're dealing with what we would call maybe a little bit of a slowdown. So this is the time to really focus on networking within your community. Um, and there's a lot of other groups that are probably around that might be good connections for you to make. Um, I'm gonna throw it over to Blake here and he's gonna talk a little bit more about some ideas that we can share with you. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Like we've been talking about, the whole point of this webinar is we're seeing a slowdown. We're hearing it in our conversations with dealers. We're seeing it in the data. But it's not, it's important as a, a store owner to, if you're especially seeing a slowdown, other local businesses are probably experiencing the same pain as well. So it just take some time, go into those other stores, uh, introduce yourself, find out, you know, what their pain points are, what they do, what they're looking for. And maybe, you know, you, you might find a nice way of, uh, either giving referrals to somebody or more importantly, getting referrals from that same person. And you can also leverage in-person network groups uh, like builders associations and uh, BNI. Those are great. You know, we were uh, a big part of the uh, baggy, our builders association in, in Indianapolis. We were always taking uh, advantage of their events by getting booths, taking our products there, meeting people, uh, sponsoring their golf outings, just getting our name out there. You know, events like that are great because they often do kind of force speed dating. So one thing we wanted to use that for obviously was more custom builders. So we would literally get a list of the builders that were in that group participating in Baggy. We would rank who we wanted to meet with, and then we would get 15 to 20 minutes of FaceTime just solely getting to know them Take, telling about our company, you know, what we have to offer, who they were currently using, any of their pain points, and starting to build that relationship that over time allowed us to get our foot in the door and secure business. Uh, we we acquired a lot of builders that way. It was great. Yeah, I think that's amazing that you can kind of get in a one-on-one -on -one setting to build that trust. Um, and especially with something like BNI, you're you're usually the only flooring store that's allowed in that group. So it's kind of unique to that where you're like, I have a special place in this group. I can, you know, I can utilize my relationships. Um, and and a lot of that one-on-one -on -one time is important because you actually become the go-to person for your your entire group, which I think is really, really valuable. Um I often had people just randomly sending me a text message or a, a message on Facebook that said, hey, Rachel, you probably know somebody that does X, Y, Z. And that was kind of a, a really great way to utilize my relationships with them. But it also showed that I was a trusted um, advisor, I guess I would say, to those people. Um, and then on the same page, you know, networking online can have a lot of really great um, it can be really fruitful. So I know in our local neighborhood here in Wisconsin, we have a women's network. Um, it's actually called the women's group, the Kohler women's group. And the, the conversations that happen on those groups are really valuable. So just having somebody on your team, maybe to keep their eyes and ears open of where they live, you know, where they live in their area, um, ask to join the, the group and maybe finding those places where, Somebody says, you know, who knows somebody that does tile? You know, it's that opportunity that you can put your name and your business out there. Um, but then a really great way, you know, a great practice that we've found is, you know, asking them to DM you and then you can take that that conversation offline. Um, typically, you, you probably, if you're a great flooring retailer, you probably have some people that will vouch for you on that group as well, which is kind of a, a nice nod to that, not that you're the only one um, talking about yourself. Um, but yeah, really just kind of utilizing those online relationships um, 
I've been a part of the women of the flooring business group for, like I said, four years. And sometimes just being present and having, having that online um, platform to just kind of have areas where you can ask questions, you might use your expertise. It, it, creates the trust that once that consumer is looking for flooring, that they see your name and they maybe have a little familiar familiarity with you and they can say, hey, you know what, I've seen you online. I see that you know things about flooring. Um, you know, can you help me? And then it becomes a little bit easier of a process, especially if you have referrals and things like that. Um, I think that's great. And I also use those for damage control as well, uh, <laughs> especially in, you know, somebody posts like, oh, don't use this company or someone says looking for flooring, who's, who's the company to go for? And someone might say, don't use this company. Like it's a great way to say, hey, you know, I'm the retail sales leader. You know, what's going on? I'd love to talk about your experience. So you might not yeah. save them, but you feel like they, they get somebody to listen to them. You know, you could offer maybe a coupon in the future, or if the job's still going on, find ways to, you know, figure out to make them, them happy to kind of switch them. Um, but definitely great all around the board. Another great way is just get involved in your local communities, uh, volunteer. You know, one thing that we used to do is our owners had younger kids that were involved in sports. So we would sponsor, uh, their teams put banners out in the outfield for baseball or in gymnasiums for basketball games, obviously church, you know, if you're part of a religious organization, get involved, start meeting people. That's a great way to get some business. Uh, one story that I love to tell is I played sand volleyball back in the day and half the people I knew, half the people I didn't know. Halfway through the season, I started talking to a, a guy just between games. I said, what do you do? And he goes, oh, I'm a contractor. And I'm like, no kidding. I work at ICC Floors. And we started having a conversation, got him into the showroom. Long story short, he started doing business with us. He grew his business from just doing basements to actually building his own houses. And he used us the entire way. It was a nice referral business that benefited both of us. Uh, and it happened just by asking questions and getting to know uh, people that we were participating in. Uh, similar activities. Uh, Rachel, what did what did you guys do that worked for you? Yeah, um, we recently got really involved with Habitat for Humanity. Um, I think a lot of us have that warehouse full of all the things that we don't want to have in the warehouse anymore. So we would kind of offload that to to some of them. But also, we volunteered to do some of their their homes. Like we volunteered to install flooring in um, a couple of the Habitat for Humanity homes locally. It was it was so cool to see that process come together from just picking out all the materials um, and then actually going to the job site, you know, bringing some donuts for all the other volunteers that were there. And then we just kind of, you know, kind of made some friendships, had our little sign out in the front of the, of the house, um, took some pictures outside of it. And, you know, I've seen other retailers do this and it, although you're giving um, and you're volunteering your time, it like really feels good. Like it feels so good to do that. And, and they are so thankful to your showroom, to your people, to your staff um, for, for real volunteering your time to do those things. Um, I think it just goes both ways that it really, it warms everybody's heart and it's good for the community. So I just, you know, Habitat for Humanity, if you have that opportunity to either donate product or get involved, that is one of my favorite ways to do it. No, I love that. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, we did the same thing. And just last thing on this point, uh, we also partnered with the local design school and had their students come in. Obviously, it's not anybody that's ready to buy flooring or could come work for you right away, but it was a great way just to get it exposure, you know, get people thinking about, oh, I could become a, mm -hmm. a designer at this company. So there's just literally, there's an endless amount of different ways that you can kind of strategically help the community. Get creative, yeah. Benefit yourself 100%. But hey, that's all we have for everyone. Thank you so much for taking some time to hang out with Rachel and I. We really hope you got some value out of this and we're going to open things up in a all we have for
All right, y'all. Well, that was a ton of super helpful information. And just based on the comments I'm seeing right now, and I'm just live monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, this is probably the most engaged webinar we've had today. So definitely clap it up for y'all. Um, but we got questions to get through. So we're going to kick it off. Uh, the first one has to do with being new to sales management. Uh, the question is, any recommendations for getting your team engaged? I think that's a perfect kickoff because you guys gave a ton of practical and free ways to generate more business, but it's right. How do we get that team fired up and ready to go? Because if it's a lackluster outreach, you're probably not going to see the results that you're looking for. So uh, let's start first with Rachel on this one, and then we'll go to you, Blake. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I would say the best way that you can get your team involved is to know your team, first of all. Um, I look at this from a couple different standpoints. One of the things that I think is important is to figure out what they're passionate about. So my suggestion is that every single person on your sales team and maybe beyond should be involved in one of these networking groups or a volunteer effort somewhere in your community. Um, that way they have something that they're really, you know, in tune with. They can have that bit of your business that they're bringing to that community and that group. And they're just focused on it and they're helping um, the rest of your company as well as I think there's always something that comes back for each individual. They, they get a little bit more out of it and they feel a little confidence boost too. I absolutely love that because you're not just telling them to do it. You're getting yes. them involved in the community. And it's that sort of show, not tell method, which we always know sort of like with the golden rule, everything we learned in kindergarten, we should still do today. Um, all right. Passing over to you, Blake. Um, how do you uh, or how did you get the team engaged and fired up? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, great answer, Rachel. First off, kind of side note, I view it as sales leadership and not management. I think we should lead people and not manage them. Um, I took this question a little differently. Uh, and kind of an example is when I decided to move roles into sales leadership, the first thing I did was meet one-on-one -on -one with every RSA and just get a feel, have a conversation for what their point, pain points were, the roadblocks they were experiencing. And then you kind of, you hear repeat th things when you do that. And so it not only shows that you're listening, um, but then it gave me kind of a list of actionable items I could, you know, get done. And the biggest one was pricing the showroom. A lot of people thought that not having prices on the samples prevented them from having success. So the very first thing I did when I took over was I QR coded every display in, in the, the showroom. So not only, like I said, does it show you're listening, but it shows that you're actually getting stuff done. Like, okay, this guy's here to play. He's on our side. He wants us to be successful. And honestly, it seems like we probably scripted these out. We didn't because mm -hmm. to me, that is the perfect end of the spectrums that we're covering. One is the community side and getting involved and sort of dealing with like the intrinsic personal layers. And the other one is like, okay, now that you've done this legwork and you're getting your teams involved, what are the roadblocks you're having to actually sell? So yeah. that was a perfect uh, one, two response on that one. Uh, but man, we have a bunch of questions to get to. And it actually works as a great segue. We're talking about getting the teams engaged. And then we talk about what links are you sending for reviews uh, if you send them to email and obviously, you know, there's a product that we have that, you know, mm -hmm. helps with that. And I saw that uh, Blue Mist Homes got that uh, at least uh, got a couple of responses in the chat as well. Um, other way is, you know, are you sending? And then if they don't fill it out the first time. What are your next couple steps to try to get that? Because, you know, we know that referrals and word of mouth is the best driver of, you know, convincing someone to buy from you. Um, so what have been the methods? And we're going to do a little flip-flop here. So Blake, we're going to start with you. Perfect. Uh, first off, I love that name, Blue, Blue Mist Homes. Um, we use BirdEye. So you can easily go to your site if you're a Broadloom customer and add customer. And you could put the uh, phone number or email in. It's going to send them a nice link with your logo on there. Um, also, Podium, who's also a partner of ours, is a great way to uh, send out reviews. And I really think... Something automated, something that allows you to keep track of, okay, I sent the review um, request, they didn't follow up, you know, send them a reminder, maybe at a different time, because maybe the time wasn't right for them. So if you did the afternoon, try the morning. 
But really, we tried a lot of different ways. And the biggest one for us was just that incentivizing the sales associates. Um, a lot of people love money and they view it as like, I made commission on this job already. Now I can do a little cherry on the top. So that really, really enticed people to follow through with getting people to leave the reviews. And I, I'm not joking. People were beating down the door saying, okay, where's my, where's my gift cards? Like it was, it was a big hit. <laughs> it's always helpful with that little extra incentive. And again, you know, when you see that review go up and you see your name called out, there are very few feelings of knowing that you, you know, did a job well done, not just for the company, but for the people that you're working with, because they're going to buy floors again. Right. So it's really delivering that incredible experience. Uh, and Rachel, what about on your side? Yeah, um, Blake said it well. I, I used Podium in my past, um, but also for those that did not have a very technologically savvy <laughs> device, maybe a flip phone perhaps, um, we did use Google My Business and there is a way that you can send a review right from there. They actually make it pretty easy now. It wasn't as easy in the past. Um, play around with it yourself if you want to check it out, but it it makes that um, it makes that that Google link a lot simpler to send out. Um, I also like to have the client leave the installer's name on the review nice. um, along with the salesperson. So we would mention their names multiple times because I will tell you that if you post that review on a cork board where the installers are all going to see it, they will start to see a little bit of competition and they want to have their names on that board too. So you could even incentivize your installers to do the same thing as Blake had mentioned, maybe a similar incentive program. Um, do a good job, get your name mentioned and get a $50 gift card. I think that's an amazing yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys even hit like a double stack there. So <laughs> one, get a gift card for getting a positive review. And then two, end of month award for the best installer with the most reviews. That way they're just constantly thinking about how can I deliver the best service, the best quality and the best communication. Because we hear all these stories. This guy didn't show up. This guy did show up. But early, it's that extra layer that makes the customer super, super happy. Mm -hmm. So I think great, great examples and advice from the two of you. But that's not surprising on our side. Uh, so uh, we actually had like a, uh, it looks like this is again from the one and only Mr. Buckles. Uh, what do you feel about software products that stop short sub five-star reviews so you can work with that customer prior to posting? So I think what he's saying here is, you know, there's an opportunity to connect with the client and make sure that if it's not a five-star review, what are the things that you can fix to make better? Um, and obviously leveraging technology helps that significantly. Uh, so how do you, I think the question is, how do you guys feel about it? Um, I know I have my beliefs, but uh, people are here to hear you guys. I'm going to flip it again. So Rachel, we're going to start with you and then we're going to move over to Blake. I have kind of mixed feelings on this because yeah. I think there are some valuable, there, there is some value to getting a less than five star re review. And when I say that, I mean, if you only have five star reviews, you don't look real. Um, <laughs> However, there's going to be a couple one-star reviews in there and they're probably going to be completely illegitimate. Like there's not even a real, they probably don't leave any information. Um, but if there is something like a four-star review, maybe a three-star review, you do get an opportunity to then fix it. So there's a way of doing it. I won't get into all the details. Um, I feel like you do need to respond for sure, mm -hmm. but also um ask the person to possibly you know maybe they could change the review once you do take care of whatever the said thing is mm -hmm. that they left you the three-star review for um you just have to i mean again it comes down to communication just like everything else but if you're on top of it and you're very quick to you know take care of whatever that concern is um you're going to be better off in the end so that's my answer <laughs> So it's, you know, sort of greet the, you know, uh, the constructive feedback, if you will, head on. Yes. Uh, it'll ultimately make you better. And then you'll be five star in no time. Blake, what about you? What's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I think you nailed it, Rachel. Um, Transparency is key. It used to be, I feel, years ago that everybody would trust just reviews blindedly. And that's how they decided to do business. Obviously, it's still super important now. But when I'm looking for someone to do business with or maybe a travel spot or resort to stat or something like that, 
I don't mind seeing subpar reviews. What I care about is to Rachel's point that the owner responded. Hmm. Uh, let's face it. There's, there's some crazies out there. So right. I like to see, um, and this is how we did it too. Like that response being like ASAP and addressing the situation, especially for those clients that you just can't win with. That's what I think customers really, really take to heart. Um, so I think transparency is key. And I think obviously, like Rachel said, respond right away, address the situation in a nice way, but know that you're not going to win back that crazy customer, um, but you're preventing a loss of another customer because of that review. Two excellent responses. And, you know, if you're looking at the comments in the chatter, uh, Denise had a situation where someone gave a glowing one star review thing they were uh, best uh, the number one uh, for number you. one, Denise. <laughs> yes, number one, Denise. You're of course number one. Uh, and the ones I always love is uh, excellent service, amazing. Couldn't be happier with both Blake and Rachel. Four stars. What mm -hmm. do we got to get the five? Sometimes people just, you know, mm -hmm. they have such an intense grading system. Nobody's uh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Uh, looks like we at least have one more. Uh, I think this is from the one and only Ben Henwood. Uh, Hi, ben. Rachel, I think this one is directed more towards you because you did reference and mm -hmm. showcase the cutting board. Yes. Um, what was the sale amount that got the cutting board? And I think a good extrapolation there is, are there different levels? Um, I almost think of it like a carnival, right? You get the small bucket, you get the small toy, the big <laughs> one, the medium, and so on and so forth. Do you guys have different buckets and levels? So first question, what was the sale amount? And then second, uh, secondarily, you know, do you guys have levels or did you have levels uh, to for giveaways? Uh, so Rachel, obviously this one was directed towards you. So we'll uh, uh, have you answer first. Sure. Yeah. Um, so for the cutting board, that wasn't the only gift that was in that package. We kind of left it up to the salesperson. Um, and I'll just be honest, this, the cutting board costs like maybe $55, $60 with shipping. So it did not cost a lot. And I think using a local person is really a great idea too, um, to pass that business back and forth locally. However, um, so that I, I always sent those with our new homes um, so that they could display it proudly in their new kitchen. And that was one thing. So if they did a maybe if it was a kitchen remodel or a first level remodel that we were putting flooring in, I would also pair that up with kitchen items, you know, maybe some nice kitchen towels, some other accessories. But if it was for a bathroom, I obviously omitted the cutting board and I did something a little different. So I, I paired up with the local um, shop that did kind of soaps and um, like air freshener and like natural things like that. And I put a little basket together that way. Um, I, I really left it up to the sales team to decide what they wanted to do as far as like a tiered system. I just didn't want to manage that part. Just like Blake said, you know, we don't want to manage. Um, we want to be a leader. And we felt that having that autonomy and just letting them make that decision was was best. Totally. Well, again, like Blake said, right, you're not managing the team, you're helping lead them. So let your team make those calls. Although, Blake, did I just steal your line? Blake, no. what are your thoughts here? <laughs> Jeff, you're the man. You can steal whatever you want. <laughs> uh, first off, I said hi to Ben, so I got to say hi to Denise, too. I love <laughs> Denise. Um, yeah, we had tiered system. So the, the boxes, you know, we'd run reports and anything over $10,000, you know, retail project sale would get that. Um, I think it was like the, the highest price box was like 150 bucks. They were they were super, super nice. Uh, so range between 50 to uh, 150. So kind of like Rachel said, there are some, like maybe it was an $8,000 job, but it didn't go the smoothest. So let's give them the, the $150 box. Um, you can make those decisions, but it's just putting something in place. The, the company even did, and thankfully I didn't have to take advantage of this, but they offered a sorry gift. So it was like a, a package of like the sorry board game. So if you royally messed oh. up, send uh that's cute <laughs> like i said they planned to take advantage of it but i heard some uh good stories of consumers getting a little uh chuckle uh because they both parties realized that it was not an ideal situation and that happens honestly humor often conquers all so 
<laughs> uh, I love that approach. And I uh, just want to leave this open for anyone else that might have other questions popping up. But, you know, Rachel and Blake, even as you're talking about these things, and we're talking about all these other ways for you guys to network, in that last question, I think you also just unveiled one. Find a bunch of local companies that make custom local goods. Go there. Let them know that you're looking to use them as like a thank you gift. Leave a card. And I'm sure if you do that, you know, at scale or a bunch, you're going to start to get some referral business. You know, someone's going to hear about flooring and they'll say, oh, go to, you know, uh, Blake's or Rachel's. Uh, you know, they're, they're uh, solid, you know, trusted people in this community. So, um, yeah, we uh, real, real quick off that, like we partner with a local apparel company. The owners were buddies. So obviously we gave him our business. Anytime he needed to update his house, who was he using? Us, of course. He was giving us referrals. Our owners were big into CrossFit. So they were always, you know, getting referrals from the CrossFit gym. Like there's, there really is a ton of different ways for you to have success in that regards. You know, it's like that marathon concept, right? Everyone's like, oh, networking. It just it seems so big. I have to do all these things. Just go and start with the one and then mm -hmm. take two and three. Is step after step after step. So uh, it looks like we did get one last question uh, from Mr. Taylor. Uh, Rachel, how have you seen the women of the flooring industry group uh, grow over the years? I think that's a great one, especially given we're talking about networking. Uh, yeah. Because especially a hyper niche networking group and, you know, how you guys can collaborate. I think that perspective, you know, everyone in the flooring industry wants to continue to be this really close knit community and you guys are doing an incredible job at that. So a uh, little pivot there, but we're still in the networking. Uh, <laughs> so Rachel, uh, how have you seen that grow over the years? Yeah, it's been, um, I can't believe it's four years. First of all, that's like kind of crazy for me to think about. I think that the biggest thing that I've seen is within the group, it's created a very safe place for women to ask questions that they maybe wouldn't otherwise, um, but also growing confidence in women within the group. Um, but we do have a, a page that is public as well. So I do want to say that if there are others in the group that are not women, if you want to support women, if you have a have a woman in your life somewhere. I would say that that is a great place to, um, you can also ask questions there, but the, the group has grown in, I mean, Broadloom has been such a great supporter of the group. And we think, you know, the Broadloom team for sure for FloorCon being able to put on some networking events. We, you know, those are the kind of things where we actually get together in person and that's where the real power comes in. And it just makes me really excited when I get to like see somebody and they're like, are you Rachel? And then I can give them a hug and it's just like the best thing ever. So um, if you know me, give me a hug. I apologize if I don't recognize you right away, but I will, I will help anybody and we will help anybody that we can in that group to become, you know, the best that they can. And if they want to DM me or any of us on the side, more than welcome to. Um, we're just there to help. And it's just, it's a phenomenal group. I can't say enough. All right. And it looks like uh, you have an additional member uh, or unofficial member, Mr. Uh, ben Henwood. Uh, he is a part of the group, or at least a strong supporter. And again, uh, for those who weren't at FloorCon, last year's event was <laughs> awesome. Uh, just absolutely packed. Uh, and obviously we're going to do it again in Amelia Island this year. Uh, you know, shameless plug, uh, November so 28th through 30th. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, everyone give it up for Blake and Rachel. It is not easy doing these things. Thank and again, uh, I absolutely love it when we can have these webinars where we're just talking about practical, meaningful advice that you can take and apply today. And don't think about doing all of it. Pick one yes. to start there. And we promise you'll see the benefit and the outcomes associated to it. Um, but again, you know, please feel free to uh, shoot us or drop us a line. Uh, if you receive the email invites, if you respond to those, we'll make sure that Blake and Rachel get those uh, responded to. Um, but we'll be back in two weeks uh, with another webinar on how to rapidly grow your organic social, uh, you know, with a couple of easy tips and tricks. So. Nice. Just more ways to help you drum up business. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Blake and Rachel. Have a wonderful day, y'all. See ya.
Thank you.